Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we explore the brand new Polk Penguin Conservation Center. And April is Michigan Wine Month, so we give you a sneak peek of the Michigan Wine Showcase. And then we check out the Motor City Comic Con, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. I'm out in the Rocky Sea on board Ernest Shackleton's ship on the way to the Antarctic to see the penguins at the Polk Penguin Conservation Center at the Detroit Zoo. You're right, we have brought the Antarctic to uh, to Detroit and yet we're able to stand here and not freeze to death and not get blown over by 200 mile an hour winds. Although is... you've recreated that experience. Well, partially. <laughs> I mean, we do want our visitors to survive the experience. Yeah. But this is really an amazing experience, both for people and for the animals. It's the biggest penguin environment anywhere outside of Antarctica. Oh, wow. And they have almost 330,000 gallons of water, chilled water, very cold water. It's 37 degrees behind me, water temperature is about 40. Um, and so they can do deep dives, which they haven't been able to do before. And with the ice and snow, they're slipping and sliding, and it's like, wow. Yeah. So they're learning a lot, which is exciting for them, because they're very curious. Well, animals. that's fun for the visitors to know that, too, and they can kind of watch and see them adapt. And, exactly, yeah. exactly. Because that, you know, it takes time for them to adapt to such right. a radically different environment. Right. So we have four different species. Um, we have king penguins, gentoo penguins, macaroni penguins, and rock hopper penguins. The gentoos underwater, they can swim. Well, they fly through the water, really, at 22 miles an hour. It's actually hard because you're so close to them. Yeah. It's hard to video them because they go so fast. They go. And we have a total of 83 birds. Mm -hmm. uh, they all get along great. There's no conflict and yeah. they don't interbreed. So it, it it's working wonderfully. And there really isn't anywhere in this facility where there isn't something going on either uh, talking about the history of Antarctic exploration, or talking about science, or talking about the environment. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of other great stuff to see in the zoo, so right. if you spend an hour here, you still have another three hours at know, least, to, at yeah, least. to see the rest of the zoo. <laughs> I'm going to go start exploring. I hope you don't get seasick on the voyage. Good oh, luck. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I got the starting stomach. I'll be all right. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here at the South American Gallery, then we're going to journey to the Antarctic and we're going to end up on the other side at the Antarctic Gallery. Here's a film about Ernest Shackleton. We're going to kind of journey on his ship on the Endurance Expedition where he set out to cross the Antarctic. So after you check out the first viewing area, you come on board the ship and the whole experience is recreated with the video around that you're completely immersed in. I want to give you a tip. I want you to walk this ship slow. You want to get the nighttime experience and see what the endurance had to go through. Okay, so if that was immersive enough, you can, down below, you can hear the creaks of the ship. They've got more stuff. We've got cold ice water shooting out from above. We're going farther and farther down below. So as you go down farther under the ship, it's like you're actually underneath the ship looking through the window. This is real footage that was actually shot. So it's great you just keep going farther and farther down to the bottom of the ship. A little close. Oh my gosh, again. <laughs> So when you get off the ship, it's like you're immersed underneath the ocean. The whole experience totally envelops you. So this tunnel is not only above you and on all sides of you, it's below you too. Because if you look down, you're going to see the penguins swimming underneath too. Oh, there's, there's one. Look at that. Oh, here comes another one. Oh, and another one. 
If you leave that area, where it's above you, to this huge glass wall, loaded up with starfish. There's information going. You can see in the glass. You can read about it. Oh, look at the speed of the Gen 2, 22 miles per hour. So they've got little nooks and crannies where you can get other close-up looks. Again, like you're right immersed inside of the tunnel, but over here you get your own little private viewing area. So what do you think about the Polk Penguin Conservation Center? It's awesome, isn't it? Sophia. <laughs> it's great. It's fun watching them, and you can see them up close, and they're jumping, and yeah, it's very cool. So, very so cool. you came out to the wow. zoo just to see the new exhibit? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because we hadn't been here since last summer, so we're like, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Let's come out and check it out. So as you walk through, we've got other little nooks and crannies you can go in. I see some, there's a kid one back there, and then you're entering a whole other tunnel. Look at that. Oh, hello. They don't have to worry about any predators out there. They can just swim and have fun, put on shows for us. Hello. I love the Penguin Center. It is a thousand times better than the old Penguin Center. I just absolutely love it. Hey! And my uh, <laughs> my grandniece is having a ball. Yeah. Then we exit to this big iceberg looking area where you can just learn more information. So over here is a nice science area explaining how heat is trapped, how volcanic eruptions affect gases, and what they're doing to research the penguins, collect data on them. We had a lot of it fun going through the tunnels, taking pictures. The penguins are really up close to you, which yeah. is a really great experience for the kids. We made a full circle. We started out over there, we went down below the ship, we saw the penguins walk through the tunnel, then we come up and we end up over here to see the penguins up and above swimming again. There's all kinds of them out there on that ice cap out in the middle. And if you want to take some of the Antarctic home, they've got the Drake Passage gift shop. I'm guessing it's everything penguin under the sun, yeah? All kinds of neat gifts in here to take home. So you've got to come to the Detroit Zoo to visit the Polk Penguin Conservation Center. And you can't miss it because it's this giant iceberg as soon as you walk in. And what else is really cool is in the wintertime, this area right in front becomes an ice rink. And in the summertime, it's a squirt zone. So make sure you put it on your list of things to do in the D. of high-quality top-notch wine made throughout Michigan, but you don't have to travel far to taste it because every spring the Rattlesnake Club lets you sample it at the Michigan Wine Showcase. We love it. It's great food, it's great wine, lots to do, lots to sample. It's an annual event now, no <laughs> doubt. It starts it off every city, year. So we just went five minutes down the street I just together. pick him up in Indian Village. Yeah, awesome! want to introduce Detroiters to what is in their neighborhood, what, what is in their community. We feel like it's all one big family. Yeah. And the Detroit audience has been so receptive to these wonderful wines. Where else could you get 28 different wineries from the Lake Michigan Shore, Leelanau, Traverse City, the Old Mission Peninsula of Jackson, all over the state come right here. And letting our consumers experience what it would be like to be in a winery tasting room and more awareness of how great Michigan wines are.
anybody who knows the rattlesnake knows they do a great job with the food. They do. And in fact, they have red and white wine pairing stations. The foods are all coordinated, they're organized, so that if you walk up there with your red wine, you're going to find something that's going to go well with the red, and likewise with the white. When you find something that you really like, you place your order through Plum Market, and then do you leave with it, or does it get shipped to you? I mean, how does that make sense? You process? don't leave with it. It gets shipped to a, one of the local Plum Market stores, so you can just pick it up there. Well, I've got my glass. It's time to sample. So, uh, where shall we begin? Head this way. We have a lot of different things. Can you tell me something about what you like in wine? I like uh, dry red. Ooh, dry red. Dry red? sparkling. We have a sparkling red that's pretty dry, a little light-bodied, fruity. You know, you're known for the sparkling, sparkling wine. Nothing but sparkling wine. Nothing but sparkling wine. Yep, we know that real wine has bubbles. Oh, I love it. See? Now, what is that called? It's called Red. Just Red. Easy to remember name, mm -hmm. R-E-D-D. So you've got some creative names. You've got Red, Green, and don't yep. you have a wine called Detroit? We absolutely do. Wonderful, fun wine. And I actually sell it on draft at the restaurant I work at in Royal Oak. Oh, what's the name of the restaurant? Cafe Muse. Cafe Muse. So Very cool. We have a Cabernet Sauvignon, a Merlot, a Malbec, and a Cabernet Franc blend. A blend oh, it all, all together. Four grapes blended all into four one. Grapes, oh, that yeah. sounds really interesting. Okay, it's I'll very that. good. It just won a silver medal at Finger Lakes, New York. Chicone Vineyard and Winery. Okay, great. Okay, this is, so this is four four grapes in one. Yes. Oh, it's nice. I'm with Murray Restaurant in Gross Point. Yeah. Michigan wine has really come a long way. Um, and we, we do include the Penn Valley Riesling on our glass program, and we have the Chardonnays of Wincroft on the bottle list as well. Those wines have been made and crafted by hand for almost 20 years. They're as good as anything out there. Yeah, all right, well, I'm, well maybe I should go sample those then, Matthew. I think you I'm should. glad I ran into you. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> you can get lost here with all these wineries. I don't know where to go, but I am looking for the Wincroft that was recommended. It's just everywhere you look, there's so many choices. It's been aged for four years in oak. It's an extremely long time. It's going to give you a lot of caramelized, brulee, rich flavors. Sounds, sounds good. You make it very, sound very, fabulous. Very, very rich and delicious. Rich, okay. Well, forget it. But you tell me. Oh my goodness, I think that's the best Chardonnay I've ever had. Well, you know, you don't typically see Chardonnay aged for four years. Huh? Michigan's right. holy water. What was the inspiration of this title? I figured Michigan needs its own wine Bible. A little bit of education, a little bit of uh, history about Michigan wines. Mm -hmm. And then it's also 81 interviews of the winery owners, the winemakers, and the vineyard managers. His wineries here. Oh, it's fantastic the sparkling, sparkling wine. The sparkling wine. Let me tell you how good Larry's sparkling wine is. Okay. He sells it in France. We are all executive producers of a show called Wine Warriors that's uh, featuring wineries from the peninsula in Mission and Leelanau Peninsula. The sneak peek behind the curtain of what really happens in making wine, growing wine, bottling wine. It's not a sipping, swirling type of show. <laughs> it's a bumpy road from grape to glass. That really says it all. <laughs> On that, I say Name. salute. Wine Warriors. <laughs> wine Warriors. Now, what do you recommend? Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. 2011 Reserve Pinot Noir. Reserve. Now, what does reserve mean? It's eight dollars more than the regular. <laughs> <laughs> eight dollars no, no. more. I said it with a straight face, though, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, it starts in the vineyard, mm -hmm. and we go through, and we it's the oldest vines we have, so that the grapes that are left on the vine have a better chance to get riper. And then in the cellar, this was in there for 16 months. 16 months. And then months. we pick out the best of the barrels, and that becomes the reserve. Let's see how it is. Mm. Oh, that's very smooth. That's very nice. Thank you. Mm. Are you enjoying the event? Yes, we yeah. come every year. I recommend it to everybody that this is the event of the year to attend. I love having it here. I think it's a wonderful place, you know, bringing Michigan wines to Detroit. Right. What's better than that? So the Harbor Red, that sounds like the most Michigan-y to me. Can I try the Harbor Red? Certainly may. 
Now, what what do you recommend for somebody who doesn't know much about wine? What do they look for? Just uh, they should keep drinking. <laughs> keep drinking, yes. and then they'll find one that, that suits their taste. That is the best way to educate yourself on what you like and what you don't. And a lot of people here will tell you that's all you need to know. After you try it, if you like it, great, it's the perfect wine for you. If you don't, move on to the next. I like this. Yes. This is very good. My mom says that that is the perfect pizza and spaghetti wine. Well, this is obviously the most important market for us in the state, so mm -hmm. we're delighted to be here. She'd like to try a glass of wine that she can recommend to everyone in Detroit. Your Turo Surly Chardonnay, 2012. Okay. Salute. Salute. Thank you. Oh, that is nice. That's cool. really good. Thank you very That's much. That's very nice. This is our chancellor. I guess I didn't realize that there was a winery so close to yeah. Detroit. Oh, I like it. Very cool. Thank you very much. I like it. Naked. Naked Chardonnay. Naked Chardonnay. Unoaked Chardonnay 2013. So naked means unoaked. Oh, that's bad. Very smooth. I love it. I think one of the most exciting things is the first of our artist series. It's our unoaked Chardonnay from 2012. Oh, that is very nice. So, Christine, you're from the Dearborn Farmers Market, and you're so excited because... We are excited. For the first time, we've been able to partner with wineries, with farmers markets and wineries. You can get press menus at Michigan well, Smarties. Michigan. <laughs> Buy local, drink local. <laughs> no, there you go. <laughs> so how sweet the wine, or how dry, or however you like it. But what's really important is that all these great Michigan wineries come to the D every spring so that you can get a taste of the sweet fruit of Michigan at the Michigan Wine Showcase. There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. The Detroit Music Awards are in true Grammy style, and Thomas the Tank Engine rolls into Greenfield Village. The Magical History Tour makes its U.S. debut at the Henry Ford, and the stars of Nashville take their show on the road. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. the Motor City Comic Con. They've got comic books, celebrities, and more. It's crazy fun. Meow. We, we love, love the, the D. D. I love the D. So Michael, the Motor City Comic Con is really your baby, is it not? Uh, that's right. I started it back in 1990. And back then we started out as just a comic book convention. Over the years, we grew into much more of a pop culture event, yeah. crossing over into the gaming and the actors from television and film. We have a costume contest with prizes and everything. Mm -hmm. and then on Sunday, we even have a kids-only costume contest because on Sundays at the Motor City Comic Con, children 12 and under are free. Is it always the weekend after Mother's Day? Or Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Every year, we're the weekend after Mother's Day out here mm -hmm. in Novi. You can buy comic books here from 50 cents probably to $50,000. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, I'm going to meet up with BJ, and he's going to sort of take me around. I want to thank you. Sounds and, uh, great. I come here often. I've been here for years and years. I love the celebrities. I love the gear that you can buy, all the comic book stuff. Yeah. I kind of geek out at this thing, so if I get a little crazy, that's okay. Oh. <laughs> I love your show. Discover the D. So, BJ, where can I get some superhero t-shirts? Superhero t-shirts. Yeah. Right yeah. there, a wall full, hundreds of stuff. T shirts, Everything. sweatbands, hats, super cool, all sorts of good stuff. We need to get some. Right. Let's go. Okay. Look, everything hard to find all in one spot. It's the Comic Con cave. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Can I borrow some money? There are amazing oh. buttons and pins and, and hats, onesies. Which may not be that exciting to you, but you know I do have an infant at home. I actually <laughs> do wear onesies. Again, walls and walls of comics. It, it's, it's ridiculous how much oh, stuff there is. Books. And the artists wow. themselves are here in a lot of cases, too. You know, this is really what it's all about. Uh, the diehard people are here for the comics. People like you and I, I yeah. might want to talk to some celebrities and look at the costumes and buy a cool Thor shirt. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, the people are going to be going through these shelves 
all day, all night. Until this thing ends. Spider-Man! <laughs> Who knew you were so romantic? Who does Spider-Man geek out about at the Comic-Con? Oh boy, I don't know. Right now, I'm pretty uh, excited about all that Ghostbusters stuff. Really Ghostbusters stuff, yeah. Did you see Ernie Hudson who's I here? I did. I didn't get to shake his hand yet, but I'm really hoping I can. Well, I mean, you are Spider-Man. That is true. Maybe I can, you know, scoot in there. What you working on? Oh, I'm working on a sketch of Poison Ivy. Oh. Poison Ivy? I You're love wearing Poison a Ivy. Yes, I am. Too. She's my favorite super villain. Oh, really? Yeah. My favorite's Catwoman. Oh, Catwoman. Yeah. Catwoman, yes. Batman. Batman. Oh, see, together, that's great then. <laughs> so this guy is really a creepy looking character. You don't want to mess with Al. There's Stop. such cool action figures here. I mean, all your, your traditional comic book heroes. Yeah, are these friends of yours? I mean, I grew up watching them, of yeah, course. Now. So I did I. Believe it. Mike and Susan from the Brady Bunch. This is incredible. Or Bobby yeah. and Cindy. Welcome to the D. Yeah. So, so is this your first time in the Motor City? No, we, we've been in Motor City before, but this is our first time at Comic Con. What about um, the the fans here in Detroit? Are, are they going crazy yeah, about no, you? know, they're really, guys? really nice. I, they, I like they them seem a lot. to be more normal. Yes. Have you noticed that? We more have, normal here. We talk normal. about this I after know, the show. So yeah. if, you're, if you're really not normal, we go home and, and you know we go back to the hotel and, and discuss and tell stories. Yeah. yeah. But but. People in Detroit, yeah. they're the crazy Brady fans, and yeah. I and I mean that in the nicest possible way. We love crazy fans, but uh, we've seen we've seen uh, ones that are a little off more in more more than in Detroit. <laughs> Gary Williams is Greg Brady. Yeah, he is. he is. But you gotta love that. He wears the uh, he wears yeah, the tiki Johnny idol Bravo. around. You know, when he, Does uh, he still wear that? Oh yeah, he wears so it everywhere he goes. He is Johnny, Johnny Bravo, Bravo awesome. and he still fits the so, suit. I was here a long time ago for some. Some car show uh, along the way in the early 90s. We have the North American International Auto Show. We've yeah, got the no, biggest one. This was one like a hot rod car Autorama. show. This is like the Autorama. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> was like the Autorama. It's a fantastic time. Who do you get really excited about? I've got a picture with George Takai. That's, oh, that's it right there. I'll, see. I'll show you. we got to take a hold look on, at Hold this. on. Give me a second. Don't Let me pull see. it up. Not those wrong photos. No, those no, no. Those. Very cool. Buster Fire is like one of my favorite movies. And here she is. Way back. Hi. Blast in the past. How's it going? Do you know that that was almost let's see, 25 years ago? Yeah. It's going great. I'm enjoying Comic Con. I'm enjoying Michigan. You guys are pretty cool. Have you been here before? You know, I was naturalized here through Canada, through, uh, through Windsor. So as a kid, we lived here. My dad was signed to Motown, and we lived here for a year and change. Did you know that? I did not know well, that. Your band. dad was signed dad to Motown was signed Records. To Mot her father, Tommy Chong, legendary <laughs> he was a musician comedian. First. Yeah. Musician. Cindy Williams from that TV show. What was that show called? <laughs> Shamil. Shamazel, you can yeah. see your whole oh, yeah. I can get Veronica. How's it going? It's going great. Welcome to the D. Thank Have you. Have you been here before? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah? You mean to Detroit? Yes, yes. Love Detroit. You love, love it. Hey. There's all these celebrities and really cool things to sort of soak in take in. Yeah. Who do you get excited about? Oh. Well, Chewba I'm sitting next to Chewbacca, <laughs> number one. It's pretty darn cool. Thank you, BJ. Thank you, Veronica. Thank and you. Thank you, Detroit. John E. L. Tenney. That is me. What's up? Motor City Comic Con? I love it. I'm a big fan. You're I've a local ghost hunter, too, though. Local ghost it. hunter, local comic book nerd. I've been coming to this Comic Con for 17 years. That's scary. There's a lot of haunted places throughout Michigan, and you take people to and help them investigate ghosts and Absolutely. all Absolutely. Michigan is one of the craziest places that anybody can live. We have more boats and planes vanish in the lakes than in the Bermuda Triangle. We have haunted houses. We have Bigfoot sightings. In 1966, we had the biggest UFO flap in the, in the entire world. Michigan's the craziest, greatest, creepiest, weirdest place for anybody to live who's interested in that stuff. BJ, you know these guys? Well, Tony Bob and I go way back, and Wolfman Mac, he is a, a star, a local TV legend, scaring the pants out of the old school chiller movie. We get a, oh! Oh, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Stay creepy. Shazam! <laughs> so it's not Halloween, it is costume time. 
We are backstage at the costume contest at Motor City Comic Con right now. We gotta go out there and win. We beamed down here about several years ago and we are back again to do it. Again. Super oh. baby! <laughs> are you kidding? Very are you a bad guy? <laughs> yes. Girl? Look at her villain. We're villains. Oh, we awesome. Actually I love villains. villains. Uh -oh. I didn't even really plan on participating. We just I just love dressing in costume. Yeah. The competition is just for fun. Just dress up for fun. Okay, BJ, thank you so much for showing me around the Motor City Comic Con. Oh, Veronica, I had a blast. <laughs> what, what a great time hanging out with you guys. So much energy in here. It's so much Wild fun. costumes. I, I had a blast. Let's keep shopping. Let's do it. That's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you would like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.